is the legendary Humble and Fred Show, Canada's national morning show. You are now about to witness the strength of street knowledge. When you smile, it's like you're waiting for something. Well, looky here. To spring from the it's Humble and Fred Radio. Of course, you can hear some extra stuff each and every day at HumbleandFredRadio.com. Live around uh, the continent today, one 662 4743 our next guest will be sure to get that phone ringing because people will be like, oh, my God, Daniel and Stephen Shahori are on your show. That's amazing. That's how it works. That's how it works. Their new book is called Media Whore. Please welcome these prolific writers and uh, mirth makers, Daniel and Stephen Shahori. Thank, oh, thank you. Wow. All of you. This thank you. The- thank you. Look at that. The, whole, the intern got, army. This Just- is the first time we got applause on a radio show. Well, there's a lot of firsts about to happen, young man. Yes. Uh, you're uh, not only uh, very fine writers and performers, you have uh, put together, you, you also do some publicity. Is that where this all started? That's where it ended up after we were doing the performing and writing stuff and realized if somebody doesn't promote our stuff on our behalf, which they won't, we're going to have to figure out how to do this ourselves. Very true. Yeah. Are you intimidated by Stephen's uh, incredibly um, great radio voice? Is that, is, that, is that intimidating? Usually I, was, I, like, I will just send Steve and I'll just sit back with the interim army and let him do Because, yeah, he's an amazing radio voice. We had a few yeah. drinks this weekend, so my voice is about 20% sexier than it normally is. Yeah, for me it's hash yeah. Yeah. when I get that hash. <laughs> Whatever works. Yeah, I get that hash voice sometimes and I... I feel like I should just talk like <laughs> yes. this. Um, but here's we're here to talk about... Uh, Media whore. But before we do, you know, Daniel and Stephen Shahori have had a, a long and, and wonderful history of, of making people laugh. And you, you give us a little background for those people that are listening that aren't familiar, uh, Daniel, with your work. Well, we started uh, at the we started doing shows at the Second City when they had a, in the old location on Blue Jays Way. They had a side room called the Tim Sims Playhouse. Yes. I know you gentlemen have been there back yep. in the day. And mm-hmm. I know uh, Tim Sims. You knew Tim Sims. I never I had did. the pleasure of meeting him. Yep. No, me neither. So, uh, he, so we came around after that room was dedicated to him. And I started as a as an usher at the old theater. And I would sit in the room. My job, what a, an amazing job, was just, just to sit and watch all the comedians come through that room, their stand-ups, the sketch comedians, the theater people. And then Steve and I just met these people. And it, it took us about a year and a half, and we started, you know, we should be doing this as well. So we started putting shows up in there. And then as Steve said, we're like, we need people to come see this outside of our friends and family. We quickly learned how to or steve learned how to write a press release i think he took a little class at a at a fringe festival yeah and then trial and error and then we've been doing this close to 20 years folks Uh, started coming to us after a certain amount of time saying hey i heard you guys kind of know how to do this mysterious thing and which i I guess it can be we we didn't looking at it now it seems we try and deconstruct that and, and be like this isn't that mysterious but we remind ourselves that for a lot of folks this seems like a really odd thing to to learn how to do to learn how to publicize your own stuff right but don't you think that part of the barrier for most performers is not that it's so hard to do i mean in terms of the complexity they're just lazy there's lazy and but they also it might appear <laughs> to be daunting if, if you don't know the process and after many many years we're like listen it's really the book is called a shockingly simple guide because really what for us to to end up here, we asked Amanda. I said, "Hey, can we come and speak with Humble and Fred?" About it's actually this? been the long con. Uh, we've known Amanda for about I don't know uh, fifteen plus years, and this has been a long con to get on this show. <laughs> and the friendship is over after today. Yeah. That's know, she served her purpose. No, but you talk about daunting too, and I think a lot of people think, "Is it worth it?" And how do you measure its worth? Whether you're yeah. breaking through or. Well, you can measure that in many ways. I mean, there is a monetary way to measure it if you wanted to. Like, yeah. you, you gentlemen sell ad space on this. People can sponsor you. And we would say, look, one way, whether it's a newspaper, a television, a radio show, they have they sell ad space. Measure what they would sell versus the time that you're allowed to appear on a show like this. And mm-hmm. you'll see that the, the monetary value is massive. Yeah. And it's, it's also when you know, too, that uh, being a guest on a show or being having an article written about you People are going to tend to pay more attention to that than if you are, you know, in the ad space or you know, in, on that show or in that publication. Mm-hmm. Just mm-hmm. if you if you're out. interested, you can go to media whore w h o r e dot me. Uh, do you not think there's some confusion with the last name Shahori <laughs> and media whore? Yeah, 
It, the, it actually took me several months into the book process to realize that that was going to become a thing. Uh, it's I'm a well thing, aware my friend. Horror yeah. is in the last name. We've my, been dealing with that our whole lives. But yeah, my a, favorite variation of that nickname was Crack Horry growing up. That was my favorite. I never had that. Yeah, I had Crack Horry. Oh, was, man. Yeah. yeah. Are you guys working on your follow-up book, Dance the Media Horror, which is very limited. It's, it's what you do is to publicize the horror. The Jews thought that was funny. We're half Jewish, so we found out half funny. Uh, horror. Yeah, yeah. Hey, I need some publicity for the horror coming up. The horror is a dance they do at the wedding where they put the bride and groom on the chairs which is hilarious to me. It's like, oh, great, a bunch of uncoordinated Hebrews trying to balance yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> on a fucking chair. J- Jews, it's, it's, we can only incorporate furniture Seriously. into dancing. You didn't do that at your reasonable. wedding. Yeah, we did. You did? Yes. I forgot. You have had and you stepped hey, on the glass. And my oh. book's called Great Jewish Acrobats. <laughs> 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 like Jewish Cirque du Soleil. The Kaplansky yeah. brothers are in town. <laughs> it's Klesmer incredible. Music. They just stand there hoping not to lose their balance. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, back to your book. Please. The, uh, media <laughs> Me, uh, and and how is it a thick book? Is it a big tome? It is not because we are inherently lazy as well, uh, like a lazy. lot of performers. Uh, so it's a thin book. We we know that you don't want some daunting tome. Ironically, we came our book came out the same day as Hillary Clinton's book, which is about four hundred and fifty pages. Yeah, it's too many pages. That's a lot of pages. <laughs> so many. Pages. She had more to talk about than us, though. That's in the all. Past I thought year. it was even more than that. No, but Freddie, no. who, who has four hundred and fifty right. pages to read? Who can do that? <laughs> well, you, you can't call something shockingly simple and it be yeah, it's addictive. Right. right. So it's about one hundred and forty-five pages. Like, all right, and you uh-huh. should be like, shockingly you can, small. You can get through it in one or two sittings. Uh, but the basic gist is, you know, if you if you're in any discipline, whether you are a uh, uh, performer, if you're a small business owner, entrepreneur, musician, whatever it is, and you want to get the word out on something, it's actually really easy to do. And that's what we're trying to show in this book. Is this a cost thing, too? Would you recommend, if you can afford it, to use a publicist? Or would you say we would, everybody should do their own because you can do it better yourself if it's done properly? We say you're you're the best person to do this yourself because mm-hmm. nobody knows you better, better about, than you. Of right. course, and what you're doing better than you. Yeah. And if, if this is... If it's say you're just doing a one-off event, you want to do a charity event, you're never, yeah. you don't intend on doing this ever again. Absolutely, hire a publicist. Preferably, but if you're yeah. starting out, and you know for the next, for right. the conceivable future, for the next ten, fifteen years of my life, I'm going to be doing stand-up. I'm going to be doing plays. Start doing this now. Mm-hmm. And, well, Howard does a lot of charity. Things. Yeah. yeah. Well, apparently not as much as you. No. <laughs> let's get a let's get our uh, fuck. You know, yeah, I'm not going to bother. Charity fuck competition. Fuck, fuck yeah. Amanda Barker's with us. She's an angel. One of our favorite she people. Is. Uh, hi, Amanda. Oh, hi. How are you? That whole thing with the chair. Yeah, what, Seriously. What did you want? I just wanted one of the boys to get up, bring the chair over here, and and but you're next thing I know you're carrying the chair, and these strapping interns all just looking at you like I don't know what you out. <laughs> Jesus. Sorry, you had to see it. I apologize. That came off more aggressive than I meant it to. Uh, Barker, how do you know these two? What have you done with it? Who, who don't you know, Barker? Who haven't you had? Do you guys all just one big giant swingers pool in the second city? Yep. Marco, yep. you guys. Well, we referenced the Tim Sims back then. That was what it was back then, where all the comedians all at some point would come to that room, and we met all the, these wonderful people through that. Marco Sorry, was doing Tony drunk. and Tina's wedding, and you were, were too, so right? I did two years ago. And it was yeah. this great show, but it was also very creepy because they would just um, talk to each other, stay in character, and then everybody would leave. And you'd see them kind of like straggling out, and nobody would be around, and they would still talk to each other in character. And it would well, really you and Marco did that? Creep me yeah. out. Is that yeah. part of your cosplay and the thing yes. you guys do? You're like, oh, that was a pretty good wedding, huh? Yeah, oh, that was cosplay. great. <laughs> and nobody would be around, and I would just get the heebie jeebies. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Like, you'd be in the, they'd be in the bathroom, sort of looking yeah. in the mirror. No, you're looking good, buddy. You're looking good. Have you and Marco ever made love as Tony and Tina? No, we never played Tony and Tina. Oh. We were the they didn't remember want it we're bad character enough. actors. Have we you ever made love where one of you is Tony the Tiger? And uh, perhaps <laughs> I feel badly because my husband's right there. And yes, I'm not, he no, is. That's why we're not so. able to. Have you ever <laughs> seen Marco is a hand model? Do you guys know that? You know, I, and and I really love Marco for that. I've tried. I have uh, insanely nice hands. Let and me see. Look at these, and I dare say they're they're at Marco level. But I've made no money off of these. Can, can we, we get Marco off? Can we do a hand? Uh, because I've never been able to capitalize well, on Marco's got hands. beautiful hands. I'm a 45-year-old man. Those are yeah. beautiful We're very hands. different. I think we'd never compete for the same gig. Well, That's no, because true. Marco's That's a true. tad swarthier than you are. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. But, so, I mean, but he yeah. does have nice hands. These are nice hands, right? I mean, oh, lovely. But these are the hands of a 21 year old. Once upon a time with Marco and his beautiful hands, uh, Steve and I and Marco wrote a show for him called The One Woman Show, where Marco played a woman dressed as he is now, essentially. And he, with those beautiful hands, and that that was a, a wonderful experience. We, we, we won a comedy award we for did. Marco playing yeah. a woman. And if we can tie it all back, that we got a truckload of publicity on that one. Yes. Uh, I think every. Almost everybody who could cover that show did. These guys have got four Gemini Award noms, a Dora nom, plus 15 Canadian Comedy Award nominations. We lose a lot. But very, not a lot of wins. No. Really? Not a lot of wins. But the one with Marco, you... we did win. Oh, yeah, you did? That was yes. the yeah. win. Yeah. They're that like the, the Buffalo one. Bills. We needed Marco. We are with the Buffalo <laughs> Bills of comedy. More than them. And uh, they founded Sweat Equity Publicity in 2002, and uh, they're here. The game changing. DIY book is called Media Whore. <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking of doing a DIY uh, television show on HDTV uh, for, you know, other Jewish people. It's called Call Someone. <laughs> and uh, thank you. I'm just trying to joke out whenever I can. It's still fun. <laughs> Hi, welcome to Call Someone. Today we're going to do some bathroom renos. Watch. Hi, can you come over and fix this? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to call someone. It's just me and a phone. I me, not, me, uh, me and a computer. I Google. didn't understand the premise immediately. It's like, oh, yes, that, that's... No, Pitch the premise... It. I'm still working, the great, I'm still working on the premise. I'm still working on the premise. Once the premise kicked us, yeah. that's a great We're not idea. a handy people. No, we're not. <laughs> But uh, you're yeah, calling them yourself. My my tag, I do this whole thing about how Jews aren't handy. And my, my, one of my tags is, uh, isn't it ironic that, you know, the last Jewish yeah. carpenter was nailed to a cross? Yeah. That was the last time any Jew picked up a hammer. Our and, Jewish father was a carpenter, though. Jewish father. Was, yeah. Yeah. was he a carpenter, really? He was. Oh, he wow. was uh, our claim to fame. He was like Jesus. Was He He, he uh, was one of the very last people on the very tip of the CN He was an iron worker and connected the very tip of the CN Tower, him and a crew of natives and, and other Russians because uh, they were the only people that would go up there. Wow. That's crazy. It was yeah, crazy. It was and crazy. I'm afraid of heights. So I might skip the generation. Yeah, that is wacky, yeah. especially native people. Like native, how they can... That's what he said. He said the only people that would go up there were other Russians, Ukrainians, and natives. They were right. Was he a Russian Jew? Yes. Yeah. Well, kind he was of. born in Russia. Polish Jew. Yeah. Yeah. Polish Jew. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. <clears throat> so now well, we're couldn't speed. pay me enough. But he was no. a carpenter. Yeah, same with me. You know, they have that thing now, the CN Tower... Uh, Oh, the uh, edge walk. Edge the walk. The edge walk for people who, like, uh, honestly, it, it, to get over their fear of spending $125 on something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Could you imagine that, though? I mean, you couldn't get, I, I you couldn't, couldn't get I me up do. there. You, If I was sentenced, if that you was do. like a, yeah. a punishment, I couldn't do. No. I don't see the point. No, I don't get it. Like, you just go up there and look out the window. Steve, like, you did know you, know you I mean? end like, up why? doing it? No, I, never, I would never yeah. do that. Yeah. yeah. Not a no, chance. Neither, no. Okay, well, this book is called Afraid of Heights. Yes, it is. <laughs> how your uh, how to guide. And so, uh, what are you selling this for? Uh, uh, how in, much is it in this fine country? I believe it's what nineteen ninety five. And in the states, cheaper in America, where I live, it is sixteen ninety five. Oh, good. Due to the you know, I forgot about um, that. Yeah, the difference in currency. But it is available in stores throughout North America and Online. worldwide on Amazon. Well, congratulations. Thank you so you much. Guys. Thanks, guys. It's good to uh, finally be here. We've been sending people to the show for many true. years. That's true. Have you really? He yeah. has, yeah. We've had... All those improvisers you, you love. Have uh, <laughs> we love improv. And, and wrestlers. We've sent you a lot of people. And uh, what kind yeah. of feedback do you typically get from an appearance on the Humble and Fred show? Uh, from the people. People love doing this show. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm, uh, we've been excited to do this for a long time. Amanda's been trying to think of a way to get us here. It's like, well, until we have something she really said, if you good, write an entire book, then we'll come to Maybe this. we'll get you on. <laughs> well, maybe you guys well, that, would that's like... That's true. The reason I asked how your clients have fared on the show is because, you know, to be fair, this isn't for everybody. You know, this kind of forum, this kind of rambling... You know, this thing, it does, doesn't work this. with everyone. I much personally, I prefer this. Because a lot of people who are, you know, going out doing their book tours or yeah. they're publicizing a, a new CD, they, they're, they're used to more of a regimented feel. Uh, you know, they're not, this is a whole, the whole thing is a tangent. Uh, okay, so now to, I, to, to understand your question better, no, people much prefer this format, the open format. They can swear. They they have time to really explain themselves. Sure. It posts to a three to four minute interview where you, it's just point, 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 point. Joe Sorry. Rogan will have people on for three hours, and it might be a bit too much. I mean, but this is a yeah. great amount of time. Like, if you can't explain yourself in 20 minutes, then... Well, yeah, but the, the whole key is here. Is this, you know, we're live on serious, but mm -hmm. beyond that, it's on demand. That's right. So you can listen to it in bits and bites That's if you right. want. The problem is when they slot you for 20 minutes, 
on a phone interview because you know what's going to happen. Somebody's going to break in after 20 minutes or something oh, God, and say yeah. that. Because it's probably, you know, those, you know, when they do those lineup Almost like their yeah. pool, pool interviews. Uh, yeah. You know, that's Which what we've it's done be. before. That, it's not. But you that's know, what he, yeah. you can bet your ass that's yeah. what he's doing. Do you know doing. why? Yeah. He needs the Shahori brothers. He does. As a publicist. Mm-hmm. And, and I'll tell you something, too. Dan had a situation. We don't name the wrestler, uh, but uh, he, Dan was getting all this great stuff for this particular wrestler. And then the the wrestler's manager, or however it worked, was kept flaking out. And it was making Dan look bad as the publicist. Because, we, you know, we were told, yeah, you're going to get full access and you can send them to all these great places. Uh, but then at the same time, when, when Dan had to go back to these places and say, you know what, I can't get to this. He wasn't a dick about it. Well, it's also your reputation. Yeah. Right. You Absolutely. build up some goodwill and 20 right. years in the business and people can rely on you. And all of a sudden, somebody that you're doing PR for flakes out. Yeah. And it looks bad on everybody. This has probably happened many times over the years with various people, though, right? You get people wigging out at the last second or doing uh, pulling, yeah. things like this. Yeah. This is par for the course. Well, I'll tell you right now, mm-hmm. if you're uh, looking for publicity, go to the source, Media Horror, Daniel Shahori and Stephen Shahori, published uh, by... Self Council Press yeah. in Vancouver. Uh, it's available uh, worldwide. Amazon.ca, Amazon.com, Barnes & Noble, Chapters Indigo, and Sweat, e- Sweat Equity... Mm-hmm. Dot .ca and Staples even I didn't even know they carried Staples books. It's, it's they... Staples What's that's, that's how that I was easy the books I know <laughs> The Shahori book yes. please here that was easy <laughs> yeah. furniture section yeah All right well listen there's a lot of goodness going on the uh, media horse what did I call it the uh, Oh please what was that called the compendium Oh, of, so uh, good what you mirth, mirth dispensary. I don't know. Quotes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's going to be our poll quote on the site. Uh, these guys are good, and we want you to go get their book. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Thanks, Howard. Thank you so much, guys.